at these catastrophes. In the first case, we can see that mud and clay particles gradually move down the slope of a land. Next, we can see that a part of the hill cut off and the rock particles move down the hill. Do you know what are these natural phenomena called? The large scale movement of loose particles and rock debris down the slope of a land is called mass wasting or mass movement. So in the previous video we saw that loose rock particles were either moving down the slope of a land or even moving down the slope of a hill and these natural phenomena is called mass wasting. So this large scale movement of rock debris is called mass wasting primarily due to two reasons. The first reason is that the materials that move down or come down are nothing but rock debris which we can consider as waste. So it is known as wasting and why mass? because the rock debris move down the slope of a hill in masses or collectively. Due to these two reasons, this natural phenomena is called mass wasting or mass movement. Now, what causes these rock particles to move down the slope of a hill? The rock particles and other debris move down the slope of a hill under the influence of gravity. In other words, gravity pulls these materials downwards. Therefore, gravity is the main driving force behind mass wasting. Or in other words, mass wasting is caused due to gravitational pull of the earth. Now, apart from gravity, there are other factors that influences mass wasting. Let us discuss those factors. The first factor that influences mass wasting is the weight of debris. Or higher the weight of debris, the rapid is the mass movement. That is, heavier materials like large gravels or pebbles moves down the slope of a hill rapidly than lighter materials like sand, silt or clay. So the weight of debris has a strong influence on the speed of mass wasting. Again, the speed of mass wasting gets enhanced by the presence of lubricating moisture or lubricating agent like rainwater. We know rainwater is an agent of gradation and this rainwater not only wears off or disintegrates the rock particles but also helps in transportation of these weathered rock materials. So rainwater increases the speed of mass wasting. This is because in presence of rainwater, the friction between the weathered materials and the ground surface over which they move, so the weathered rock particles move down the slope of a hill very rapidly. Again, when the weathered rock particles are saturated with rainwater, the weight of the debris rises and again due to higher weight of debris the movement of mass wasting is rapid thus this is how the presence of lubricating agent like rainwater increases or enhances the speed of mass wasting another factor that influences mass wasting is the slope or gradient of the land the weathered rock particles moves down a steep slope very rapidly than a flatter slope. So steeper is the slope of a mountain or a hill, the rapid is the movement of weathered rock particles. Therefore the slope or the gradient of a land also influences the speed of mass wasting. So apart from gravity, these are the factors that influences the speed of mass wasting. That is the weight of the debris, presence of any lubricating moisture and the slope or the gradient of the land. So we just discussed the meaning and characteristics of mass wasting. Now this mass wasting is of several types. So now let us discuss about different forms of mass wasting. Mass movement or mass wasting is primarily of two types, slow and rapid. 
In the first video, we saw that mud and clay particles were gradually moving down the slope of a land. So the gradual movement of mud and clay particles represented slow mass wasting. Whereas we also saw that huge chunks of rock debris were rapidly moving down the hill and that phenomena represented rapid mass movement. In the first case, we will discuss about the mass movements that are very slow or sluggish. Look at these two pictures. In the first picture, we can see that the trees have curved tree trunks. And in the second picture, we can see that the railings have tilted. Now, why do you think these trees have curved trunks or the field has a tilted railing? The tree trunks are curved and the railings are tilted due to slow and downward progression of soil under the influence of gravity. Do you know what is this phenomena called? The slow and downward progression of rock or soil particles under the influence of gravity is called soil creep. That is, it seems almost the soil creeps or crawls on the ground. Now, this process is very slow and is hardly visible to us. And due to this process, the tree trunks have been curved or the railings of the field have tilted. Sometimes, the rock particles and soil gets mixed with water and move down the slope of a hill very slowly. So this sluggish movement of wet soil and other materials down the slope of a hill is known as solifluxion or soil flow. So here we have two pictures of soil flow. In these two pictures we can see that the soil almost flows like a liquid. And just like soil creep, soil flow or solifluxion is a very slow movement. Now before proceeding with our lesson, let us try to answer this. The sluggish movement of wet soil down the slope of a hill is called solidification, liquefaction, solifluxion or evaporation. Well, the correct answer is solifluxion because we just learned that the sluggish movement of wet soil down the slope of a hill is called solifluxion. So, we just now discussed the types of mass movement that are very slow that is soil creep and soil flow. Now, let us discuss about the mass movements that are very rapid or swift. If under the influence of gravity, soil and loose rock particles move down the slope of a hill or a mountain very rapidly, then it is known as landslide. Landslides are very common in mountainous regions after a heavy downpour. What happens is that during a heavy downpour, rainwater seeps into the ground and get mixed with the loose rock fragments. These rock fragments eventually move down the slope of of a hill thereby resulting in the formation of a landslide. Landslides are caused due to natural forces like earthquakes and volcanoes. These natural forces violently shake the earth's surface and unsettle it. As a result, cracks develop on the earth's surface and the rocks become loose and they suddenly slip down the slope of a hill or a mountain, thereby resulting in the formation of a landslide. Now, earthquakes and volcanoes are caused due to endogenic forces like movement of tectonic plates and they trigger an exogenic movement that is landslides. Thus, endogenic forces and exogenic forces work hand in hand and they are integrated. In this video, can you see a stream of mud, silt and clay particles flowing down the slope of a land? This movement is called mud flow. In fact, mud flow is a flowing mass of soft, wet and unconsolidated soil containing large amount of water. Thus, mud flow is very rapid and it contains large amount of water along with soil and loose rock particles. Now, in this video, we can see a phenomena very similar to mud flow, but 
here we can see that the mud and rock particles contains very less water and this event is known as earth flow. Thus earth flow is a downslide viscous flow of fine grained materials that have been saturated with water. Again this movement is also very rapid but it contains very little water. So we just learned that mud flow and earth flow both are rapid mass movements of rock particles along with water. But these two processes are not exactly the same. So now let us discuss the differences between these two processes. Mud flow is the movement of weathered rock particles down a slope with more water content. Conversely, earth flow is the movement of weathered rock particles down a slope with less water content. Now let us look at these two pictures. In the first picture we can see that there is enough water along with loose rock particles and this picture represents mud flow. And in the second picture we can see a downward movement of weathered rock particles but the water content is hardly visible. So this picture represents earth flow. Now let us discuss the second point of difference between these two processes. Mud flow is common in arid regions with steep slopes and little vegetation. Now you must be wondering that in case of mud flow the weathered rock particles contains more water then why is it common in arid regions? This is because arid regions is composed of soil particles like sand whose water holding capacity is very less and therefore water does not get mixed with the loose weathered materials and so mud flow contains more water. Conversely, earth flow is common in hilly regions that have rich alluvial soil. Now we know that the water holding capacity of alluvial soil is very high. Therefore, the weathered rock particles get saturated or mixed with water and we see a viscous fluid moving down the slope of a hill in case of an earth flow. So these are the points of distinction between mud flow and earth flow. In case of mud flow, the water content is high, whereas in case of earth flow, the water content is less. Mud flow is common in arid regions, while earth flow is common in hilly regions. Another rapid mass movement is sheet wash. Sheet wash refers to the rapid movement of rock debris saturated with water down the slope of a hill. Sheet wash is mainly caused when water denudes the top layer of the land surface in the form of long sheets. Now deforestation or removal of vegetation exposes the top layer of the soil and increases the chances of sheet wash. So previously we have discussed about the slow mass movements like soil creep and soil flow and just now we have discussed about the rapid mass movements and they are landslide, earth flow, mud flow and sheet wash. So these are the different forms of mass movement and mass movement can be classified into two types slow and rapid mass movement. Now during these mass movements different landforms are formed on the earth's surface. So now let us discuss about the landforms that are formed by mass movement. A meander refers to the winding course of a river or the curves and bends that are formed by a river. Now look at this picture. In this picture we can see alternate ridge and hollow formed in the sand. These alternate ridges and hollows are formed in the sand by the action of wind and this landform is called sand ripples. Thus sand ripples refers to the alternate ridges and hollows formed in sand by wind. Now we will discuss about meanders and sand ripples in details in our subsequent videos. Now let us see another kind of landform that is formed by mass wasting.
we studied that landslides are common in mountainous or hilly regions. Sometimes when landslides occur in mountainous or hilly regions, depressions are created and these depressions are eventually filled up with water when a glacier melts and this results in the formation of lakes. Thus lake is also a kind of landform formed by mass wasting. The last landform that we will discuss is escarpments. Escarpments are also formed due to landslides. What happens is that sometimes when landslides occur at the edge of a hill, this portion of the land gets denuded and slide down the slope of the hill, thereby resulting in the formation of an escarpments. So these are the different kinds of landforms that are formed by mass wasting and they are meanders, sand ripples, lakes and escarpments. So in today's video, we first understood the meaning of mass wasting. What is mass wasting? Mass wasting refers to large scale movement of rock debris under the influence of gravity. Then we discussed about the factors that influences mass wasting. We also discussed about different types of mass wasting. Mass wasting can be primarily classified into two types that is slow and rapid. And we also discussed about different types of slow mass movements and rapid mass movements and then we finally discuss about different landforms formed by mass wasting. In our next video we will discuss about denudation. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to our 5000 amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests. Get all your doubt resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and iPads. So at Delta Step, learning is not just fun and easy but it's rewarding too. So register for free now.